let's face it, no one really chooses to be in a season of waiting. It requires a lot of patience, perseverance, and a lot of re-surrender. But even in the waiting season, God can be teaching us so many things, and we're gonna be talking about some of those things in today's video. Hey guys, I'm Nora and welcome back to another video. Today we are talking about waiting and in particular what God can teach us in our season of waiting. You know, this is the fifth year of my own personal waiting season and for some of you that might look really long or really short, but whatever it is, we all have our own unique seasons of waiting. But in that, I also believe that God has the ability to teach us things about ourselves in our seasons of waiting, whether it's from the lessons that we've learned, from the mistakes we've made, or even just impartation from His Spirit. So today we're talking about five signs that I've learned and hopefully that encourages you to remember that even in the waiting, even though it can be difficult, there's also good things that can come out of it as well. Lesson number one is patience. Patience definitely is something that we all kind of like learn in the waiting period, often not by choice, but it's something that God teaches us and it teaches us to also trust in God as well. What I really love about patience is that it's actually a fruit of the Holy Spirit. So when I see patience in my life, I actually realize that's actually evidence of God working in me. When it comes to patience in terms of waiting for a life partner, the things that I'm reminded of is to make sure that I'm not hasty and I don't make impulsive decisions. One of the pastors I listen to says not to make permanent decisions over temporary circumstances. You see, when we allow things like impatience and frustration to take over us, it often makes us a step outside of the blessing that God has for us. We see that really clearly in the example of Abraham and Sarah, when Sarah actually got her husband to sleep with her servant in order to conceive a child. And what we need to remember is that in God's timing, everything is perfect. So we need to learn to be patient and walk faithfully in his timing. Lesson number two is intimacy. In my season of waiting, God has definitely taught me that the best thing that I can do in my season of waiting is actually to grow in my relationship with him, to allow him to fulfill all my needs, for me to actually be completely whole and satisfied in him. One character in the Bible that models that really well for us is Jesus himself. Throughout the Gospels, we see that Jesus waited on the Father, that he walked intimately with him. And because of that, he was constantly connected to him and refreshed in him as well. One verse that I love that reminds me of this is Psalm 51 verse 10, which says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And this is the cry of King David, who's asking God to actually refine him and to renew him in his spirit. And I feel like this is the posture that we all need to come to God with in our season of waiting in order for him to refine us and to reshape and mold us. While we all want to become like Jesus, and it sounds definitely ideal, definitely in the season of refinement, it can also be a really hard, a really difficult period because it takes a lot of brokenness and it takes a lot of re-surrender to him as well. You know, in order for God to actually refine us, we need to make ourselves available to him. And that means bringing all our baggage, bringing all our brokenness, bringing all our sin and allowing him to cleanse us from the inside out. Lesson number three is refinement. I've learned that in my waiting that God is is working. He's not leaving us in limbo, but he's actually taking this time to refine us, to mold us and to shape us into more like him. For example, he showed me when to act and when not to act, when doors are open and when doors are closed, when to walk through those doors and when to walk away from those doors. And even though my discernment definitely is not perfect, like I'm still learning discernment, it's definitely improved as I've walked intimately with God. Lesson number four is discernment. Pastor Rick Warren says, a wise person knows the difference between a no and a not yet. And I feel like this really resonates with me because I feel like in my season of waiting, God has really taught me spiritual discernment. Lesson number five in the season of waiting is timing. God has taught me that he is the author of all time and it's to his timeline and not my own that I need to work on. He reminds me that even if it's the right person at the wrong time, it's still the wrong thing and it's not the best thing for me as well. But what I find hope in is that he can also fast track that time because he is the author of it as well. You know, for example, I know a lot of people in their 20s, in their 30s, and even in their 40s who later in life got married and when they were dating in their relationships, it wasn't just a long out drawn process that took like five years as well just to get to the engagement stage. But people ended up getting engaged after like six months. And I'm not saying that's like a normal thing. It's not saying that it's gonna happen for every single person or even for myself. But it's just something that gives me hope to know that things can accelerate quickly as well. Whatever is in God's timing, he will make that come to pass in his way. One person in the Bible that I feel like had probably one of the hardest waiting seasons in the Bible was Joseph. In Psalm 105 it says, 
Until the time came to fulfill his dreams, the Lord tested Joseph's character. And if we imagine just like from the very beginning when he got the dream that he would one day become a ruler in Egypt, all the way to the end of it actually coming to fulfillment, he went through a whole season of waiting and it was a crazy season. Like he got accused of adultery, he got thrown into prison, he was sold into slavery by his brothers and all these trials and tribulations, like it only made Joseph stronger. And in that time, he grew in his intimacy with God. He grew in his faith with God. And it reminds us that in our waiting season, if we do it well, we can also grow in it as well. So if you're currently in your waiting season, I want to encourage you to think about what are the lessons that God has taught you in the time of your waiting? Where were you at the start of your waiting season to where you are now? How has God challenged you? How has he grown you? How has he refined you? And even if there are still things that you need to work on, make sure that you continue to work on that and press into him because you want to make sure that this waiting season isn't a wasted season. And trust me, I definitely know firsthand how difficult it can be to wait, especially when you feel like the promise seems like eternity away. And one thing that I'd encourage you to do is come back to God's word each time and find hope and encouragement in that. Psalm 27 verse 14 says, wait for the Lord, be strong and let your heart take courage, wait for the Lord. In our wedding season, we all have a choice to make. We can either end up doing our own thing and see where that ends up leading us, or we can choose to stay firm in our faith and trust God, just like Joseph did. And when we do that, on the other side of our waiting, when that waiting period is over, we know that we can actually step into the full blessing of God. If God's taught you something in your waiting season, we'd love for you to comment them down below so we can read them. And if you enjoyed this video, we would love for you to give this a thumbs up. And make sure you subscribe to Salt's YouTube channel for more videos on singleness, dating, and relationships. We'll see you next time.